Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video, I'm going to film a Get Ready With Me featuring the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. This is the look I was wearing in my last in the Jeffree Star review. I got a lot of requests for it. Um, it's actually been one of my favorite looks I've worn in a long time. So I'm going through the toning process right now with my hair. My extensions are out for any of you that are ever curious. At this point in my life, um, I wear extensions for volume instead of length. Like I used to have hair that was like 24 inches long. I kind of look like a porn star according to my mother. So um, I now cut them much shorter, uh, pretty much the length of my real hair, just the extensions give me volume. Again, I do have the window open today for some fresh air, so sorry if you can hear any noise. I have a directional mic now, so hopefully it cuts out a lot of the background noise. Probably sick of hearing me say that, but for those of the people that just tune in to one video at a time, it never fails. I'll get someone being like, it's noisy. <laughs> Gonna be toning my hair one more time and then I'm going to be putting my extensions back in. I wanted to give my head a rest. This is actually the longest I haven't had extensions in my hair in probably 11, 11 or 12 years maybe. So I do have my eyebrows on right now. Um, I went to an appointment this morning to get a uh, look at doing some IPL on my chest and I did have some foundation on my face, but I removed it so I could start from scratch with you guys here. So I'm gonna do this in my typical fashion. I'm going to list the brush that I'm using um, as well as the product in the bottom of the screen and I will highlight the palette in the top corner here so you can follow along with what I'm using. My skin prep is all done. It is um, my morning routine. I have tweaked a few different things. I will have an updated video coming for you guys. Typically when shadows have a lot of fallout, I switch up. Uh, most of the time I like to have my foundation done before I do my eyes just because I like to go over um, my eye area and sometimes and sometimes I do my eyeshadow first depending on how much fallout is with the shadows also guys everything always will be linked below that I use so for my foundation today I'm going to be using the D Dior Air Flash I'm going to spray that on my brush. I don't like to spray it directly on my face because I feel like it wastes a lot of product and it gets all in my hair. I love this foundation. This is one of my favorite. I think my top three foundations are my Natasha Denona Face Glow, which I wear all the time. Um, I've almost gone through an entire bottle, which is unlike me for a foundation. I was supposed to do that review when... I was supposed to do that review... I got the products, all the samples to review right before I moved and I just got so busy with work and other requests that I totally slacked. So um, hopefully I will have that up soon. I'm not gonna lie, it gets very hard keeping up any kind of like filming schedule or request when I have a kind of demanding job as well. I love this foundation because it's super light. I'm gonna go in and prime my eyes. I ran out of my um, Benefit Air Patrol primer so I'm just going back to my Max Paint Pot. Um, this isn't necessarily my favorite, my favorite base because I find this to be dry. Then again, I've had it for like a long time, so it's probably time for a new one. It is starting to shrink back from the side of the walls. Um, I don't like using my finger. That would probably help to warm it up, but because of the length of my nails, I just get makeup underneath them and then I stab myself in the eyeball, which is ill-advised. I just do that to smooth it out because I notice otherwise it can skip on this inside corner and then the shadows will skip over it as well. Okay, now we're all close and personal. So first I'm gonna take this color Buon Fresco on my Hakuhodo uh, J5522 and I'm going to place this in my transition. So again, for those with hooded eyes, not in that crease, it's gonna be right above that crease, right above that fold, lightly. I'm gonna start, put all the color on this outside part first, touch my brush down there and lightly bring it over. I love these eyeshadows. I feel like they blend so well. And I'll mention it in my review. I've been playing with this palette for some time now to get a good idea of it. And I feel like the quality of these shadows is so, so good. So much better than any other palette I've used from them. I always like to keep a fluffy blending brush as well with no product on it to go over. Since these are pigmented, it is easy to get um, a harsh line if you don't blend well. Now on my Hakuhodo um, J5533 brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this burnt orange. I'm just gonna tap it in. This is my flat top brush. Now I'm gonna place that brush basically right in the middle on my crease and that way I'm gonna get it a little above my crease and then right on it too. 
again, I always touch my brush to the back side and then drag it over. Now I'm going to pick up my Hakihodo Jade 5523 brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this Realgar. And this is like um, a MAC 217 brush and I'm going to focus this now right in my crease. And I'm going to start to draw again on the back and just drag it over. We're laying, layering so many colors because it's going to give some depth and dimension. It'll look like that blown out look where it's like lighter and then it comes down to darker colors. Again, I can't stress how important the proper brushes are. When I first started getting into makeup, I would buy all these palettes and things, and I had no brushes. I honestly had like a couple little random brushes that came in the palettes, and when I started expanding my brush collection, it made all the difference. And again, you don't need eight billion dollar brushes. Honestly, you could probably do with like something that's like a fluffy blending brush and something that's more like this, like a MAC 217, and you can always build from there, but that will get you so far. Now this color, I wanna make sure that I'm bringing um, also into the corner of my eye because what I'm gonna be doing is kind of like, I really only have three techniques that I use on my eye. I don't really know how many more exist, but I do something called the spotlight eye where it's the same color on the outside and inside, typically a darker color, and then a lighter color on the middle. Some people call that a halo eye too. I'll do like cut creases, and I also do the typical where it's like darker on the outer corner and then gets gradually lighter to the inner corner. Now I'm going to go in with what my favorite color in this entire palette is, and that's Love Letter on a pencil brush. You can use any pencil brush. This is my MAC 219. Um, this color is gorgeous and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus this over the white parts of my eye I'm gonna leave blank the part over my iris so I'm just going to go like this it just doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna blend it out and I did get a little fallout there so I'm just gonna take a brush and sweep that away I'll fix that when I go over it with my concealer sure I don't pick up too much because it does this color will help fall out if you really pack it on your brush but I don't care because it's gorgeous now for those of us with hooded eyes see when I open my eye wide like that the eyeshadow goes away I like to take it and just with my eye open draw it a little above where you can see you in my eye so almost it's above my crease because if I don't my eye swallows that and then I can't see it and then I'm gonna go through and blend this I like to place the shadows down on my hooded eye first where I want them and then I, with a more precise brush, and then I go in and blend it. Cause if I don't, it just turns into pandemonium all over my eye. I'm now gonna pick up my J146 brush, which is a tiny little crease blending brush. And I'm just going to go back and forth over my crease. You just want, I just wanna blow that out a little and I wanna do it deliberately. If I use a larger brush, it could spread the shadow higher up than I want. So first I'm gonna go in with this little one and then I'll go in with a more fluffy one. And if your eyes aren't as small as mine, you can probably use the same brush. I just find a smaller detail brush is better. I'm gonna make sure that I have cleaned off my, my J, my 5523 brush and I'm gonna go back over and blend that again some more. It's a bit, Take your time doing this too. Obviously I'm going to edit a lot of the blending out. I'm gonna take that same smaller brush and I'm just gonna go over um, where I put that and make sure I kind of drag it into where the center of my eyeball is just so I don't have any just like harsh color that it all looks blended. Now I'm going to take um, my T7 brush and I'm just going to go back over that crease, give it a little, just give it a little more blending in there. If you feel like this color has kind of gotten eaten away, like my, I feel like mine has, I'm going to pick up a fluffy blending brush and dip back into Realgar. And I'm just going to go back up to help bring these colors up, if you can see. You can always go back in and touch up some colors. One of my favorite color combos is like a burnt or rusty orange or even just a regular orange with more of this like berry purplish color. I love those two together. Now I'm going to pick up my GSN 07 and pick up this tempera. And I'm gonna use that as my highlight on my brow bone here. So 
This brush makes it super easy. You just have to run it right along basically underneath your eyebrows and it does all the blending. You could use this vermeer if you want all over this um, the blank spot that we left but I want to stay true to the look I did that you guys asked about. So I have this one Glisten. This is one of my favorite shades by them. I'm going to pick that up on a flat shader brush. If you want it really intense, you can put some glitter glue down on your eyelid. Um, I don't really find that I need it with this. And I'm just going to uh, pat this over that blank spot that we left on the eye there. And I bring it all the way up into the crease there. I'm just gonna touch that T7 down in Love Letter on one side. I'm gonna flip it so that side is facing up and I'm going to go over my crease just on that outside part first and then the inside and then whatever left on that brush, I'm just gonna kind of drag it up over almost like a little bit of a rainbow with clouds on two ends, if that makes sense. I almost want some of this color to stay on the inside because I'm gonna show you a highlight that I like to use reflects off of that. I'm gonna just dip my beauty blender tip that's already damp in that my Becca under eye brightener just to kind of color correct that darkness. I have a little bit, not as much as I used to. I used to look like I got punched in the face. I'm gonna use a little bit of my MAC Pro Longwear. Um, I'm gonna put that on my paw palette. I'm gonna pick that up on this brush and I'm going to highlight just a little. I've been trying to get away from more of like that Instagram, YouTube makeup. Um, because I, while I, while I know products and manufacturing and product quality, I'm definitely, I'm not a makeup artist. I learned a lot of what I know about makeup on YouTube. And I do, the more and more I watch and the more and more professionals I, I see, I realize that we're not supposed to be masking all of our own features. And I think a lot of the makeup that we do is inspired by drag queen makeup which is beautiful and stunning, but that makeup is more to completely transform as opposed to highlight key features. Like it's more meant to make a man look like a woman. And so a woman, when you're, you're trying to completely transform your face, it's like you don't even look like you really anymore. So I'm trying not to do that. And this is actually a, a drag makeup thing, highlighting like this. But I do just, I still do like doing this. I, I try not to go completely overboard, but I do like the highlighting. This next product uh, Julie and Alina sent me. Thank you so much, ladies. I've heard so much about this, but in all honesty, when I was trying to find it, I thought that it was only available in the UK, so I need to do some more research. This is Illamasqua's Hollow, which is a cream pigment, and it is extremely similar to my OCC John Doe that I love to contour with. This thing is on its like last leg. I have a backup. I gave my sister one backup I have, and I have one more full one. This is more dry than this one. This one is a lot more creamy, but this one is an excellent product if you guys can find it. So thank you so much ladies for sending this to me. I'm gonna take my Inglot T20 brush and I'm going to just contour a little. I was never really huge into like huge extreme contour, even though you wouldn't guess it because sometimes my blush looks like shit, but hey, what are you gonna do? We all have those days. Um, I'm going to just add a little bit of depth right here. So basically where your cheeks come in, where you feel that cheekbone roll down, right underneath it and just a little. I'm gonna take the pointy side of this brush. I like it because it draws a little bit of a line. And I'm just going to go like this, see? Nothing too intense, but since I am so white, if you saw in that video with Janine, with the light on one side, it almost looked like I had no chin. It's just like face and neck because I don't have any really dimension on my face since I'm so light. Again, I'm going to pick that up, make sure that it's on the same, and flick up. Then I'm just gonna take that brush and I just flick it up just a little. I'm gonna take my beauty blender that is damp and I'm just going to stamp that out because again, I don't want a harsh line. I just want some color on my face and a little bit of dimension. It's really faint. So see the difference right here now? I'm going to use my favorite brush ever. I have two of them, my Wayne Goss Fan Brush, uh, number 15. I'm gonna swirl this in the two middle shades on my IT Cosmetics um, Sculpted Face Book and I'm just going to set that cream. I'm gonna take what's left on that and I'm just gonna run it along my jawline like that to give me a little bit of a shadow so it doesn't look like I just don't have a chin. Maybe I don't. I'm gonna take my favorite powder, which is La Mer, and I'm going to 
dip my Wayne Goss number two brush, which is also my favorite under eye setting brush in this lid. And I'm just going to tap off the excess because since I'm dry, I don't want too much. And I'm just going to set my under eyes very lightly. Remember guys, if you're dry, you don't want to go insane with the powder. I know everyone thinks maybe when I was, when I first started getting into makeup, I thought it was like a necessity that we had to set our entire face. And I don't find it to be because unless I'm going to like some event where I know I'm gonna be hot because my makeup, makeup will start to look dry in my skin. It sucks what little moisture I produce naturally on my own. So I really don't wanna do that. I, however, don't want my under eyes creasing. Now for the blush part. This blush I love. This is the Natasha Denona number uh, blush duo and number six. It contains sheer nude and plum. This blush is amazing. It is so pigmented though. It's so easy to overdo. And granted, I, I fight natural light. So I have a sliding door on this side of me, which will make me look more natural. And then I have artificial light on this side trying to balance that out. So it will pick up colors different. Since I'm milky white, it can throw off my white balance sometimes. Sometimes I just do a shitty job of blending it again. No shame in that. Typically I like to use something like this Wayne Goss number 14 brush, but that I think is part of the problem I'm getting. Um, when I'm flicking it around, it's just so pigmented, it's hard to control. So I'm gonna pick up his number 13 brush and it's this color right here. I'm just gonna stamp it lightly in there. And remember when we wanna do our blush, since I, again, I can look like Crayola gangbang my face sometimes. I just can't help it. I think that the blush adds some life to my face. So maybe don't follow me for blush advice. I don't, I don't know. Um, two fingers on the side of your nose and to find your apples. And I'm just going to dot this and then I'm going to go back and blend. But just pat this lightly because again, if I go too much, it goes insane. I love this blush though. I really like it. It has a beautiful luminous glow to it. See, just like that. And I literally just touched it in there. But see how this again, I hardly put any on but I will say, I think a lot of it is the light. Like it looks harsh on that side and I did the same thing over here. So let me blend that with my fluffier brush. Quit trying to make me look like a clown light. I mean, it's, it's not dark, but I think when I sit back the shadow, I don't know. I take a little bit of my It Cosmetics um, Celebration Illumination Foundation with the brush. I got it in a duo. And I just stamp that on my nose because I find if I put more foundation over my nose, it can slide around. I like to wear sunglasses when I'm outside. I find putting powder over my nose opposed to more foundation will help cancel out that redness for me. Now we're gonna work on the under eyes and then all that's left is highlighter. So now for my under eyes, I'm going to do the same steps that we did above here. Same color order. Um, I'm gonna pick it up on a fluffier pencil brush. And again, I'm gonna leave right over my iris blank. Take this into the corner in here too a little bit more because once we put the highlight over it it's gonna look cool now you can use any small little fluffy brush you can even use that same one this is a makeup geek defined crease brush just to help smoke that out now um, i'm going to go down and kind of like a descending brush size i'm going to pick up my wayne goss number 20 brush pick up that burnt orange we don't want it as low and place it in the same spots. Clean that brush off. Now go back and just go over it. This part always feels really weird, but when the brushes are soft and nice, it's not scratchy. It just still feels weird. Now one step smaller, we're gonna pick up, uh, this is my Wayne Goss number five brush. I'm gonna pick up that love letter and really just focus that. And don't worry, I am gonna blend this. I'm gonna pick up that fluffy brush again and make weird faces. Let's kind of make sure that this like almost connects right there so it looks like it wraps around your eye. I'm gonna pick up any small kind of flat, flat narrow shader brush. This is my MAC 214. I'm gonna pick up that glisten color and now I'm going to go, so I'm gonna go right under my iris of my eye and just kind of work that back and forth. Basically, we're just matching what we did up there. For the inner corner highlight, this is my favorite inner corner highlight um, lately. I love this. This is my Makeup Forever. This is one of their star powders and 904. It's like a orange shift to it. 
I'm gonna pick that up with my favorite inner corner highlight brush, which is my Real Techniques brush, the shading brush. I'm gonna touch this, just what's in the cap, and I'm gonna go over the inside corner. Can you see that when it picks up on the um, like maroonish color? It just looks so cool, the orange mixed with it. I really like it. I'm gonna curl my eyelashes. Now I'm going to go in and line my eyes. This is my favorite way to tight line because I don't like pencils. I feel like it scratches my eyes and feels funny. I take this silicone tipped gel brush and just swirl it around in my gel eyeliner and look up and just, it's that simple. Now for my waterline, I've left this um, warning a few times. This contains carmine, which could be irritating to your eyes. It suggested use is for lips only. Um, I do use this on my eyes and it's okay, but if you have a sensitivity to that, do not do that. I'm going to use this, this MAC lip liner in the shade Current to line my waterline. I will leave the warning below why carmine could be sensitive for your eyes. I'm gonna do my highlighter because if I get any powder kick up, then I can go over it with my mascara. And I'm going to be using this Crushed Pearl color. Actually, the Starburst and Crushed Pearl from this um, Anastasia Beverly Hills Clean Kit. I'm just gonna do that on my favorite brush and I'm just gonna hit that on the top of my cheekbones lightly and just kind of work that in. Dust that off. And then I just blend that in. I'm gonna take my MAC Fix Plus. I like to do that over highlighters because it just kind of like melts it in. Now mascara, I'm going to use my MAC Giga Black on my bottom lashes. Remember, always do your bottom lashes first before the top because if you try to look down like this while you're doing it and you've already done the top, you're gonna get mascara all over the top of your eye. Mascara on the top. You guys told me about this L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black and I like it. I like the little brush. I realized what a colossal waste it was to be spending like 32 bucks on mascara when it's like I wear false lashes every day. What does it matter what it lengthens in volume? Okay, now for eyelashes, I'm going to be wearing my Coco Goddess Lashes, which are a dupe for the House of Lashes Iconic, except I actually like these better because the band isn't as thick, it's still thick. So if you're um, a lash newbie, these are, will drive you insane. Now just let that glue dry. Now while that's drying, I'm gonna do my lipstick. Um, I'm going to use my favorite lip liners, um, which are Makeup Forever Aqua Lips, and this is in the color 3C, which happens to be my favorite lip liner. You don't need to use a lip liner, but I like to. And this is one of my favorite everyday lipsticks. This is Dose of Colors Truffle. Normally I line my lips like right on the inside of the border. I just lined it a little on the outside. I look like, I look a little ducky. Okay guys, and this is the finished look. Um, if I'm not talking, it actually goes really quickly. I really, really, really do love this Modern Renaissance palette. It is actually one of the first palettes in a very long time that I have bought that I like the entire palette. I'm probably now at this point repeating myself even though I haven't even said it yet because I'm going to be doing the review for this now. I hope you guys enjoyed this look. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and I will see you next time. Bye.